Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Cam, coming to you, as always, from the Spotlight Studios here in Morristown, New Jersey. Now, avid listeners of the show would be expecting me to say my guest today is uh, talk about them for a little bit and then just jump into these always interesting, never boring conversations. Uh, but that's not what we're doing today. Today's a little bit different. I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone a little bit. Uh, and I'm just going to record an episode by myself. I've done this once before. Uh, if you've listened to the show, you know that was back on our Thanksgiving Day episode. Um, I don't think it came out exactly. It was Thanksgiving week. Uh, and we didn't want to have somebody post an episode that week and then just kind of get lost in the shuffle of the holidays. So basically, I recorded a three-minute episode, uh, talked about talked about uh, the types of things we had going on. Wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, and then kind of went on from there. But we're going to try to push it a little bit more. So why is today a little bit different? Uh, so today is August 3rd, Tuesday, August 3rd. Normally, we would be posting an episode with one of our real estate people on it. I don't have one today. I'm sure I could fill in. I have plenty in the can, plenty recorded. Uh, but we're going to celebrate me a little bit, believe it or not, uh, as part of our road to 100, because the reason why today is significant is today is my birthday. Uh, so it's August 3rd, 2021. I turned 31 this morning. If you ask my mom, she'll tell you the whole story. How I came out with a, my hair was all parted. I was the perfect baby, big head, but a perfect baby. Um, so shout out to mom for that one. <laughs> uh, but you know, I wanted to just take a minute here and, and talk to the spotlighters one-on-one -on -one, uh, because we never really get a chance to do that. It's usually me talking to a guest and you guys listening to their story and what makes them special and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, so this has been a summer of a lot of big milestones for the show. We've hit six, 7,000 total listens. We had our one-year anniversary back on July 14th. Uh, that episode with that recording of that little party that we had we'll be posting on august 12th uh, as part of our like i said before road to 100 which the 100th episode is coming up on august 17th tuesday august 17th and we will have a real estate guest on that one technically uh but you'll have to wait and see what we do for that so i wanted to get on here and just talk to everybody uh talk about the guests that we've had on talk about kind of the trajectory of the show all that kind of stuff and if you're able to pick anything up from this and from me because if you tune into this show twice a week uh i'm i'm hoping that you tune in for me i mean i know we have some epic guests uh, and every single one of them i think at the time of this recording will probably have uh well this is going to be 96 i think our 96 episodes so at least 95 guests prior to this more because we used to do those panel episodes if people listening do remember those and I just think it's like a cool way that we can talk and get to know each other. Like everybody knows the show started as just a LinkedIn video series back in May. It was just a little COVID project of mine. I was doing a lot of virtual networking events myself, uh, hosting those every Tuesday at 5, and wanted a way to kind of give back to people. So we had all these people showing up on the show, uh, or on the show, on the, these um, Remo networking events. So I said, screw it. Let's just take these people and give them a chance to talk to an audience. I had developed a little bit of an audience on LinkedIn and just gave them a platform. And we would run five-minute LinkedIn video series episodes. So I would have an intro written down. I would have questions written down. Normally, the guests would have their answers written down. And then I would have my outro written down as well. Uh, I used my little Word doc right in the middle of the screen to as kind of a teleprompter of sorts. Uh, but it was very question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. That's it. There was only three. Um, and it was a lot of people reading back and forth on a Zoom call, which, as you can imagine, was just electric. And I've said that several times here on the show, on other shows as well. Uh, but it's just funny to me that, that we've come to this point in our lives as a podcast family, the Spotlighter community. Um, then eventually in July, we decided to switch it up a little bit, uh, give people a chance to have more in-depth conversations uh, with me, and then give me a chance to actually have some fun with these conversations and actually talk to people and make it a conversation rather than just doing those question-answer type things. And that honestly, you know, for me growing up and last few years of my life, you know, it's confidence has always been a challenging thing for me. And that's why I think the very beginning, 
I had to do the show the way that I did it. Uh, it was it was difficult. It was difficult to get to talk to people was difficult in its own in its own right and still is, you know, for anybody. But at the same time, now talking to people on a Zoom screen, like I'm talking to my Zoom screen right now, uh, staring at myself, which is kind of freaking me out a little bit. But, um, you know, that was something that I think that once I able was able to dive into that, all of a sudden I started seeing different areas of my life start to improve. And that is, to me, the power of what a podcast can do. It's something where you kind of step into yourself and the more you're able to show up as your true authentic self. And I've yelled about authenticity quite a bit um, over the last several months, but it's just something where the more you show up as you, because that's what people want to hear from. They want to hear from you. And that's what I realized early on, you know, whether it's doing a podcast, whether it's selling title insurance, whether it's hanging out with your friends, hanging out with your significant others, hanging out with your family, people just want to, they just want to get to know you. And that's how you build the trust. That's how you build rapport. That's how you build community. That's how you build all those things. And I think that that was something I noticed with the Morning Spotlight podcast that I was able to get myself out there more. And that's been a key difference maker just in my life. Um, well, I'd like to talk about some other significant moments over the lifespan of the of the show and myself, my journey to this day at 31 years old. Um, this was, hang on one second. This was one of those things where I never listened to podcasts before. I just kind of jumped into it. I'd always listen to sports talk radio, Mike and the Mad Dog, Boomer and Carton, people like that. Uh, just that's how I knew what people do when they get on a mic and they start talking to people. I, I was not polished by any stretch of the imagination, but kind of progressing through the lifespan of the show. When we got to December of last year, 2020, I had an opportunity to go to a PodMax event. Now, if you don't know PodMax, PodMax is a uh, community built by Josh Carey and Eric Cabral, where essentially they run uh, every six weeks, they run a podcasting event. So it's on a Friday. It's true essence is it's a eight hour Zoom call, but it is so much more than that. So basically how it works as a show host, I show up, they give me three guests. I record with those three guests over the course of the day. They have two to three keynote speakers over the course of the day. There's a lot of networking involved. Uh, it is the fastest Zoom call. I've spent interviews on Zoom <laughs> that have felt longer than what the guys over at PodMax do. And I think what's truly interesting about that whole thing is that was basically just one conversation I had with a friend of mine, Mitch Beinhacker, who hosts The Accidental Entrepreneur. He was like, hey, have you ever heard about PodMax? I said, no, what's that? And he told me, and I was like, well, I, can, I would try that. Went to the first event back in December, blown away. All three guests I had were amazing, and all of the keynote speakers were amazing. I was even able to have uh, one of those keynote speakers on the show, Jeffrey Hazlett, uh, which posted, well, that was our that's January 7th or something. That was our second episode of 2021. Um, and since then, I've tried to make it to every single PodMax event that I possibly can, Uh because of the community that they attract. So every guest that I get at a PodMax event has been great, but what really moved the needle for me was the collaboration from people like Eric, like Josh, like Larry Roberts, the host of the Readily Random podcast, like Kristen Olson, host of Turmeric and Tequila. Um, they've just been people that I've talked with and learned from and listened to their shows and learned more about what they do and how they do it and how I can make myself better as a host. And that's just been tremendous. And having, we talked about this when I was on the PodMax podcast with Eric and Josh, having the access to those people and learning how they, how they put together content, but more importantly, how they get content out in front of the world. So like I said before, with doesn't matter what you're doing, podcasting, selling, developing an online presence, you need to be able to get your stuff out in front of people. And with PodMax or uh, with these podcasters that I've you know just described, that's one of the, the key things. If you're hosting a podcast, if you're doing anything online, uh, which you should be, let's just be real. If you're not doing it, you're, to me, you're missing a huge boat. Um, you know, I think that that's been something that has always been the rub. Because you could sit here, and this is hard work to get on here and talk to the spotlighters, to an audience, to a guest. 
Um, but then how do you get it out there? If not, you're just literally shouting into a black hole and no one will ever hear it. Uh, but just to kind of see how they distribute content has been eye-opening for sure and has helped the show itself and me as a person level up quite a bit. And that's opened up even more doors. So I've visited the studio down in Trenton. I've uh, co-hosted with Todd Janitazio on the On Air Brands podcast, which is part of the Podmax family. Uh, it's just been it's been an incredible ride, and I'm just so happy that I was able to get a part of that community and then become as ensconced in that community as as I am. You know, I think one of the other key things, and we've talked about it quite a bit on this show, and it's been another key thing for me has been Clubhouse. You know, and I know Clubhouse nowadays has does not have the same Social audio, you know, whether it's Green Room, whether whatever the Spotify one, I think it's Green Room, Clubhouse, you know, there's a bunch of others. Social audio is still one of those things that's starting. To, it's still developing for sure. But uh, when you look at Clubhouse back in December, January, it was like a cultural phenomenon. Like everybody wanted to get on there. Luckily, a friend of mine, Chris Vaglio, we're doing a lot of shout outs in this episode. We're going to keep doing that. Key people in the lifespan of this show. So keep, you know, if you're keeping track at home, you got Josh, Eric, Larry, Todd, uh, Kristen, Chris Vaglio, all these people that have, that have helped me to this point. He was able to get me an invite because at the time it was invite only, very exclusive, only for the cool kids. So I happened to know a cool kid and jokes on them. I was able to get myself an invite, but, uh, so we jumped into a couple rooms, was learning a little bit about what people do and, and how they do it. And, you know, not, didn't really know. I didn't have any answers for anybody. And then one day I was just, I just said to myself, self, just open up your own room. So we called it the podcast lunch hour. Uh, teach me something about podcasting. That was literally the entire title of that room. And we would do it on weekdays, Monday through Friday, 12 to 1 Eastern. We still do it. So if you're ever on Clubhouse and you want to ch check us out, please do so. Um, so I started doing that and people started coming in and I'd just be like, hey, I don't have a topic. I just want to, if I had a question, I would ask it. Uh, but we would get people in there that were knowledgeable about various things. And it was very cool to see how that started to grow. And as the host of that room, Next thing you know, people are coming up and asking me questions. My favorite, which I've said on this show a couple times, is you know somebody will jump in and be like, oh, I get 10,000 downloads per episode. I'm just really unhappy with my growth. Can you teach me how to grow more? And I just say to them, do you want to switch chairs? Because 10,000 downloads would be amazing. So if you know friends, then you can get us to 10,000 and you listen to this show religiously, send it to 10,000 friends. Uh, so that would be great. That would really <laughs> get our numbers up for sure. So Clubhouse was something that really kind of started changing how I go about everything, really, because it's one of those things where if you're up on a stage and you're speaking and you invite people up on the stage to speak with you, you have to listen. You have to be engaged. And that's one of the things that I think as a podcaster, you need to do anyway. You know, I would sit there and listen and people would come up with random questions and they would either need to answer them myself, even if I didn't necessarily have the answer, or pitch it over to one of my experts that I had up on the stage with me that could answer that question. And we've been doing that every day, almost every day. The summer we've been a little bit lax, but almost every day since January 18th, uh, which has been incredible. So Frederick was my first ever co-host and he was great. And we did that for a couple of weeks. Then eventually Frederick got another job. He had a uh, jump, jump out. So Frederick Gautier, I think that's how you say his last name. Uh, there's another shout out for another key person in this whole thing. And he'll, he'll still come back in from time to time and, and chat with us and tell us about all the cool stuff that he's doing. Then B Evans obviously was my co-host for a while. And B and I ran that room for months, just the two of us. Uh, then as we kind of progressed, we started picking up all of these other great people that would come and be a part of our little community. So we had Faith Williamson, Raphael DeFuria, uh, Lauren Williams, Tiffany Callahan. They were probably the next four that came at, came on board as part of that community um, and have just been instrumental in how I've approached not just that room, but just the show as a whole, and then listening to their shows and all the cool stuff that they do on there, whether it's talking with guests, whether it's running solo episodes, whether it's B with the tags, Raf talking about living in Italy, which I can only dream of, uh, you know, Tiff having guests on, Lauren talking about her stuff, it just and how they approach everything, not just podcasting, but social media, how they approach marketing, how they approach all these different things has been 
a true game changer in how I've gone about my day to day as a podcaster. And so eventually we just kind of brought them on as, uh, as co-hosts, co-mods, co-whatever you want to call it. They'll run the room for us sometimes if, if I can't make it or one of us can't make it. Uh, eventually we picked up uh, Bearded Brian, the host of the Dynasty of Dads podcast, and he's just been another great person because he picked up my Wednesday lunch hour. He's like, hey, I'll do this one if you want. And I said, sure, Brian, that's great because it takes one a week off of my plate. Uh, and he talks about building a community, and that's something that he's done a tremendous job of. Um, everyone, all of them have tremendous communities and Brian just decided that that's what he wanted to talk about. And he's big on TikTok and has developed a really strong community of dads on TikTok, um, and how to be of the modern day dad. And so you have all these people that are, that are contributing to the show and, and they may not even know it. And that's what I think is just so cool about this whole thing is that you have this community of people, you have all these, you know, different things going on and you get all these people in there that can help the show grow. And it has, you know, and, uh, I think that's just one of the cool things about all of this is just the community you, you put whatever vibe you put out into the world, you generally attract the same type of people. Uh, so, you know, I have, a tremendous community and it's just been incredible not just i mean the people that i mentioned there's so many more people that i that i probably have missed uh that have also been instrumental in just the overall growth of the show you know obviously my inner circle of people my parents my sister my girlfriend ish uh you know everybody that's been a part of the show for an extended period of time has really just kind of been an empowering have it has had a huge impact on how uh, empowered I feel doing this show and how confident it has made me. And I think that that's just something that's just so cool. And I think whatever you're doing, you need to find that community. So just in life, I mean, like I have my best friends, they're part of my community, my family, community, girlfriend, community, these podcasters that I just mentioned, also part of the community. And I think that we all do things so differently. And it's one of those things where we all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different parts of the country. In Roth's case, he's in a different part of the world. Um, but we all have just a similar mindset on how to approach things. And it's uh, just it's just been so cool. And it, it's just it's it's so cool. That's all I can really say about it. I just slapped my desk. Hopefully you didn't hear that. But, you know, then you kind of take it into – getting into the the July 14th one year anniversary party for the show. And I say that's the one year anniversary because that's the first episode that we posted of this version of the show. Obviously the show started back in May. Um, and I think that the cup, there's been moments over the course of the life of this show where I didn't realize the, the level of community that I had built. And then when I put out that we were running that little anniversary party for the show, um, on July 14th, 2021, we did like a ish decorated the whole wall in the apartment and she got a cake and then we just had a lot of fun, did some giveaways, of uh, some shirts, you know, we had, I think 11 or 12 people show up, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if people to show up to a podcast birthday party, are you joking? It was just, it was so cool to see. And it just made me feel so good. And that maybe what I'm doing is working. Um, but obviously we have to talk about why the show even started. The show started because I couldn't do my normal job, which is sell title insurance. And you've probably heard this story before. And if you haven't, I'm just going to tell it again. So my job as a title insurance sales rep. So if you are looking for title insurance, call me, email me, michael.ham at ctt.com. It'll be down in the show notes, just like always. That's been something that, you know, my job will be four years in August. So uh, a couple, in a couple weeks, this will be four years fully in this job. And la my whole job is to take people out for lunch, take people out for drinks, go to events, schmooze, talk to people. That is literally it. Obviously, last year in March, when everything shut down here in New Jersey, I wasn't able to do all that kind of stuff. So that's why the networking event started. That's why the original version of the podcast started. And that's why this version of the podcast started. And honestly, is going to continue because it's been a great way for me to get my face, this face, this beard, this body in front of as many people as I possibly can. And it's worked. 
And that's one of the cool things that I think that some people overlook is just the fact that there's all different ways to get yourself out there. You know, I can go to lunch with somebody and spend an hour with them and that's great. But then when that lunch is over, now I'm gone. However, if they lunch is over and they go back to their office and they click on LinkedIn or they click on Instagram or whatever, chances are my face is going to pop up at some point. So then it's like just constant, constant, constant. And that's the thing. And, and we talked, um, Todd Genitazio and Amber Furman, who are the uh, hosts of the On Air Brands podcast, they were talking about how I, it's one of those things where if you're trying to be in front of people so much, sometimes it can come off as spammy. And obviously nobody ever wants something to come off as spammy. But I think they at least said, which I hope that they're right, because if they aren't, then <laughs> I'm in trouble. But they said that I, I do my marketing for the show and for me in a way that is not spammy. It's just putting myself out there and just talking, providing value, entertainment, all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's just so many different ways. If you're in sales, if you're doing different things, um, you know that's just something that I would strongly recommend. Maybe not start a podcast, but just start develop, developing an online presence. You know, Get on social media. I know it's scary. I know some people don't want to put themselves out there, um, but there's just so many different ways to go about developing. This is basically a 24-hour-a-day sales rep because it doesn't matter when somebody goes on one of those apps, chances are, like I said, they're going to see me, and that's just the key thing. And that's ultimately why I think that so far this year, you know, barring any setbacks, I think I would say that this is going to wind up being my most productive year as a sales rep ever, even given the fact that there's less in-person events, there's less uh, in-person networking opportunities, um, but we're still doing doing some cool things. And hopefully as we continue to grow this, as we continue to grow the book of business, all that kind of stuff, I think things just start to really take off from there. But the last thing that I just want to talk about is just why I think that's worked for me. And I think that sometimes people get, sh they shy away from it just because they look at authenticity as something or they look at putting themselves out there as scary because people aren't going to resonate with it. People aren't going to do whatever. And the, some people that do put themselves out there, which is hard enough as it is, put this watered down version of themselves out there. And like I mentioned earlier, I talk about authenticity quite a bit. And authenticity is one of those words to me that's just been a bastardized, it's become a bastardized version of what it actually should mean. You know, like, uh, authenticity should be something that's like you have all this stuff up here like on the wall back here and you need to have the merch and the you know tattoos and you need to be loud and aggressive and energetic but that's not what everybody is you know what i mean and that's why i think that that's something people want to the more specific you are to who you are the more people will you will attract and that almost seems counterintuitive but that's ultimately what we're striving for if you try to put the this version of yourself out there that's, like I said, watered down, not totally you, very appealing, quote unquote, to everybody, um, I think that you're that's where you're going to run into the most problems. I think that the more you're able to show up and the more you're able to show up as uh, consistently as you possibly can, I think that that's when you start to see the most growth. Because the people that will never resonate with your message, it doesn't matter if you're full proof 100% you or the watered down version of you they're still not going to resonate with you so they don't count they're not there they're not part of your community they're not part of your audience and that's okay you can't appease everybody you're not going to be friends with everybody you're not going to get business from everybody but then you take this thing where you're more specific to who you are oh let me go back if you're the watered down version <clears throat> the people that would have connected with that message now all of a sudden don't so you're almost alienating them as well. Take yourself fully as yourself. Put yourself out there in front of people. The people that aren't going to resonate with your message, like I said, they're out. They don't count. We're not talking to them. The people that would resonate your with your message now all of a sudden are in it. They appreciate you for who you are and what you're bringing to the table, what you have to offer, whether it's educational stuff, like we talk about the real estate episodes or the journeys that some of these people have gone on. And the edu the uh, entertainment side of it because we do obviously have a lot of fun a lot of laughs on this show 
uh, less so because I'm just talking to myself, but you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to be funny. It, it may not seem like it, but I'm trying to be funny. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so I think that that's one of those things where those are the people that are going to resonate with you the most, and they're the ones that are going to keep coming back. And that's ultimately what you want. And I don't care if it's a podcast. I don't care if it's a, a client. I don't care if it's a follower on a social media platform. You want those people to come back to you because that's what's the consistent. That's the control. That's something that never changes. The host of this show will never change. I say never. There's going to be an instance where it may change on one particular episode coming up uh, soon. But the vibe of the show doesn't change. For 100 episodes uh, today, 96 episodes, the host has been me. And people come back for me, I hope. Um, like I said, we have some really cool guests. Uh, and we have some great conversations with them. But that would be my thing. So... Those are the three big things that I wanted to talk about. Just me doing my first ever really long solo episode. I don't even know how long I've been going for. 20 minutes, maybe? It feels like a long time. So shout out to people that do solo shows. Shout out to you because this is hard just to talk, just to get on here and talk. I have no notes. I just said, let's just turn it on. I have an interview coming up uh, that I'm actually kind of nervous for which is kind of crazy because like I said, this is episode 96 and I've recorded more um, that just haven't posted yet, but so probably over a hundred episodes and I have one coming up that I'm a little bit nervous about. And it's not because he's a super big celebrity. He's just an awesome dude. And I just hope that I'm able to actually do him justice. Um, and that uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a note of that uh, as we get closer to that episode and we'll do see how we did after and we'll play this snip it back and then we'll go back over to uh to that episode and we'll see what happens so uh i'm gonna put myself under the spotlight just because this is the morning spotlight so the spotlighters have been listening to me talk good for you for sticking it out for this long me talk for the last 20 some odd minutes um and if there's one thing that i can give to the spotlighters one piece of advice so i'm under the spotlight dun 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 that one thing would just be be yourself. It's hard enough being anybody else. These are these are quotes that I, I've had on the show. It's hard enough to be yourself. Why would you try to be anybody else? And that was Jeffrey Hazlett. Wally Conway said on this show, nobody does my shtick better than me, and nobody does your shtick better than you. So the more you're able to show up as yourself, good things happen. Just take it from me. Trust me. Please, please trust me. The good things happen when you show up as yourself. And I think that that is one thing. If you've listened to this show, if you're new to the show, if you've been listening for a long time, that is one thing that I hope that you do take away from not only me, but from the guests that I have on my show, because I do try to be particular about who I have on the show and what they can provide my audience. So um, if you want to hit the links, the morningspotlight.com is the website address. The morningspotlight at gmail.com is the email address. Wait, what did I just say? The morningspotlight.com is the website. The morningspotlight at gmail.com is the email address. Thank you so much for listening and for being a part of this ride with us over the first year. Thank you for spending my birthday with me. If you're, if you're interested in sending me a coffee for my birthday, head on over to the morningspotlight.com and click buy Mike a coffee. That would be cool. You heard at the outset of this, this episode that my mom bought me a coffee. So if you want to be like my mom, keep me caffeinated, keep me awake, uh, keep me productive. Morningspotlight.com, com. buy Mike a coffee. That would be great. Would really appreciate it. Here I am peddling for gifts on my own birthday. Uh, but I really appreciate all of you for listening, being a part of the show. Like I said, whether you're new to the show, whether you're a, a longtime listener, uh, it's been so great having you a part of this community. And I hope that we'll get to meet all of you at some point, maybe even get some of you on the show. If you haven't already been on the show, that would be so cool. Um, and just get more and more people involved in this and hopefully do some bigger and better things as we progress. So have a great rest of your day. We'll catch you on Thursday. We got Dan Burkhard of Wicked Tasty out of Nashville as our Thursday episode this week. Really appreciate everybody being a part of this. Thank you so much for listening, and we will catch you next time.